In this video, we're learning about vaccinations and immunity. So we'll cover the main types of immunity, how vaccination works, what herd immunity is, and also why vaccinations don't always eliminate disease entirely. Let's begin by exploring the main types of immunity. Immunity is basically how your body defends itself against disease. And there are two main types, active immunity and passive immunity. Active immunity is where the immune system produces its own antibodies, and a key feature of this is that it provides long-term protection because it leads to the production of memory cells that remember how to fight the pathogen if you encounter it again. This allows for a faster and stronger response. Active immunity takes time to develop though, because the body needs to learn how to fight the pathogen first. On the other hand, passive immunity is when you receive antibodies from another organism instead of producing them yourself. This only provides short-term protection though, because no memory cells are produced, but this protection is provided immediately. Both active and passive immunity can be further divided into natural and artificial immunity. Natural active immunity happens when your body makes antibodies in response to an infection, whilst artificial active immunity happens when your body makes antibodies in response to being vaccinated. Natural passive immunity happens when antibodies are passed from a mother to her baby, usually through the placenta or breast milk, and artificial passive immunity happens when antibodies are received by someone through an injection or transfusion from someone else. Okay, so let's move on and see how vaccination works. Vaccines are designed to stimulate and prepare your immune system by getting it ready to fight off specific pathogens without actually causing disease. Vaccinations can do this because vaccines contain antigens, which are molecules from the pathogen that trigger an immune response in a form that's safe for the body. There are various types of vaccines, including those made from dead or inactivated pathogens, attenuated strains, which are just weakened forms of the pathogen, harmless toxins, or isolated and genetically engineered antigens. Let's quickly run over the main stages of vaccination. When you receive a vaccine, these antigens are injected into your bloodstream and this prompts a primary immune response. What this means is that your immune system recognizes the antigens and you start producing antibodies and memory cells specific to the antigens. If you're exposed to the actual pathogen later on, these memory cells recognize the antigens on the pathogen's surface and they quickly transform into plasma cells that produce antibodies, which fights off the infection, often before you even feel any symptoms at all. Sometimes, booster vaccines are given to extend immunity over a longer time by making sure those memory cells remain active. Next, let's look at what herd immunity is. We use the term herd immunity to describe protection from infectious diseases that happens when a large portion of the population becomes immune to a disease. This herd immunity typically happens through vaccination programs, and this makes the spread of that disease less likely. To see how exactly this works, let's say we have two scenarios. In scenario one, only a few individuals in the population are vaccinated, but in scenario two, most of the population is vaccinated. In scenario one, because most of the population aren't vaccinated, this makes them susceptible to the disease. This means even if only a few individuals are infected initially, they can spread it to many other individuals quickly, so a large portion of the population ends up being infected overall. In scenario two though, most people are already immune to the disease and so can't transmit the pathogen to others. So, even if the same number of people become infected initially, there's a lower chance that the few non-vaccinated people will come into contact with the pathogen, so only a small portion of the population ends up being infected overall. This is particularly important for protecting vulnerable individuals who can't get vaccinated, like newborn babies, elderly people, or people with certain medical conditions or compromised immune systems. Finally, let's discuss why vaccinations don't always eliminate disease. Preventing and fighting epidemics and pandemics requires more than just vaccinating a large number of people. Successful vaccination programs also depend on vaccines being widely available and affordable so that mass immunization is possible, 
vaccines having minimal side effects to help it be accepted by the public, vaccines being supported by proper infrastructure in order to make sure there's resources for the production, storage and transport of the vaccine, and vaccines being supported by administration to ensure as many people as possible receive the right dose at the right time by trained healthcare workers. On top of all this, even if that all goes well, there can be several reasons why vaccinations don't eliminate disease. First, individual immunity can vary, which means some people have weaker immune systems and might not develop strong immunity even after vaccination. Additionally, if someone's exposed to a pathogen before developing immunity from a vaccine, they can still get infected. Pathogens can also mutate and change their antigens, leading to what we call antigenic variability. This means there can be new strains or variants of a pathogen with different antigens on their surface, and so existing vaccines might not fully protect against them. In order to counter this, vaccines need to be updated in order to recognise these new antigens and remain effective. Some pathogens can hide inside cells or body areas that are hard for immune systems to reach, making them more difficult to eliminate. And lastly, vaccine uptake can be affected by personal, religious, ethical or medical objections. And as well as this, misinformation from the media can make people hesitant to have vaccinations, which leads to lower vaccination rates and reduces the effectiveness of vaccination programmes. If you haven't heard yet, you can find all of our videos on our website, cognito.org. You'll also find questions, flashcards, exam style questions, and past papers. And we track all of your progress so that you always know what to study next. So sign up for free by clicking here or browse our playlist here on YouTube.